All right, it's Get Up. It's Harry Douglas. It's Damian Woody. I am Greeny, and we find ourselves in a fascinating little place in football today where two legendary coaches are in precarious positions. Bill Belichick and his Patriots are 0-2 as they take on the Jets this weekend. Nick Saban's Crimson Tide, a very underwhelming 2-1-1, facing Ole Miss with tons of questions at the quarterback position. So we talk about which legendary coach, which coach who you could put in the argument as the greatest of all time, is in the tougher place right now. D. Wood, how much trouble is your old coach Bill Belichick in right this minute? He's in trouble. He is. I mean, listen, you got... You have a, a chance to go 0-3, 0-2 in the division. And we know that the AFC is, is, is obviously the superior conference in the National Football League. You fall to 0-3, 0-2 in the division. I think you're pretty much toast as a team that's vying for the playoffs. And, and so let me turn to Harry because your specialty really is in both uh, the pro and the college. But we'll stay on that. Are we cutting to a place now where we no longer consider Belichick to be the measuring stick for coaches? It, it's always, well, it's Bill and then there's everybody else. Does it feel like we are moving away from that? A tiny bit, but I, I don't think you can discredit everything that he's accomplished in the National Football League, even before he became a head coach. we got to remember he won two championships with the New York Football Giants with Bill Parcells as the head coach. So he's still that elite mind when it comes to coaching. I think now there's just so much more better competition in the AFC across the landscape of the National Football League, period. And we see all these quarterbacks. He doesn't have Tom Brady, right? He has Mac Jones right now. And now Mac Jones has Bill O'Brien as an offensive play caller. And so far, that looks better. But when you have a Josh Allen and you have a Aaron Rodgers before he got hurt and also a Justin Herbert, a Lamar Jackson, a Joe Burrow, all these quarterbacks in the AFC conference, not even talking about the NFC, Things are going to be that much more harder for New, the New England Patriots. Yeah, and, and, and so you find yourself if, with Belichick there. People will bring up what's he done without Brady or at least since Brady, to your point, and all of that. And then there is Saban. So we'll come back here because you do the college for us uh, on the radio, et cetera. Um, Saban, he finds himself in a precarious moment oh, here. Oh, yes. Because it feels like he's the past of college football and Deion Sanders is the future. I think there'll be people outside who look at it that way. Is that the right way to look at it? To a, to a certain degree. Uh, I think what Nick Saban has been able to do, just like Bill Belichick, can't be ignored. But when you look at people like Coach Prime, who goes to Colorado, and a lot of people question, okay, Colorado of all places, but when you have a vision and you understand what that vision is, and now it's being executed to fruition and perfectly, you look at that, and, 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 and what's the manner that he's doing it in? He's doing it his way. Right, you, I, I was out there this past weekend at Colorado in pregame in the warm-ups, and you have Desi Banks, who's a top comedian, Lil Wayne, you have Master P, and all these guys coming to see Colorado and Coach Prime. He's a guy that can relate to those players on every level because he's been there and done it. And then he's been there and done it with criticism at some point, the way he did it, being his authentic self as a player and now as a coach. So when you look at a guy like Nick Saban now who's struggling at the quarterback position, that's one of the reasons why Alabama is struggling right now. And it's not just the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. It's the offensive line that's terrible right now. That offensive line isn't playing at a high level. But when you lose a Bryce Young, who's the quarterback and the anchor of your team, you lose a Will Anderson Jr., who's the quarterback and the anchor of that defense, and you replace seven guys defensively that played meaningful snaps for you in 2022, you're going to have questions right now. And I look at this game against Ole Miss, I'm picking Ole Miss. And I would never pick Lane Kiffin over, over, over Nick Saban. But the quarterback position in Jackson Dart and what he's been able to do allows me to do that. And I'm going to say the biggest thing is, as it relates to Prime is the transfer portal. Yeah. That's the, to me, that's the biggest thing because what happens is in recruiting, sometimes these guys get rated, but you miss on those guys in recruiting. Prime has been able to use that transfer, transfer portal, you know, to, just to perfection. It has this Colorado Buffalo team the center of the college football universe. Absolutely. And so, again, just to sort of make the point as clear as I can, no one is discounting what Nick Saban has accomplished. He is the most accomplished yep. college coach in the history of that sport. No one is discounting what Bill Belichick has accomplished. He is the most accomplished head coach in the history of pro football. I, I suppose some of the older fans might debate that, but in the modern era, there isn't any question. The question we're bringing up here is, are those coming to an end? Is, is, is it just about the end? Are we seeing the well, end of this time of Bill Belichick? Are we seeing the end of this time of Nick Saban? The thing about Nick Saban, and I had a chance to work the early signing day this year for college football. Mm -hmm. He still had the number one recruiting class. Right. So those four and five star guys are still going to Alabama. 
the chess piece here for Nick Saban is the quarterback position. And he's had the luxury of having a Bryce Young, um, Mac Jones, Mac Jones two, uh, two Jalen Hurts. Hurts. You have all these guys, right? You don't have that right now. And when he made the change to from Jalen Miro to Tyler Buckner, I was like, okay, maybe that may be a little spark. But what I seen this weekend from the other two backup quarterbacks, I literally said, hell no. <laughs> you got to go back to Jalen Miro if you want an opportunity to win this year. They both desperately need wins this weekend. And don't forget, you can watch Get Up every weekday morning on ESPN between 8 and 10 a.m. Eastern. And you can stay tuned for more exclusive Get Up content on YouTube as well.